Hello to you, dear brothers and sisters. We are continuing our teaching today concerning the Antichrist. I would prefer to speak about beautiful things, wonderful things, the thousand-year reign of Yeshua, but what can we do? God has given us much information about this difficult period of time that we are facing, and we want to learn about it and to internalize it and remember it so that it will serve us when the right time comes. So we're continuing in the book of Daniel, and this time we're turning to chapter 9, chapter 9, verses 24 to 27. I want to read these verses. Seventy weeks have been decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. So you are to know and discern that from the issuing of a decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the Messiah the Prince, there will be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. It will be built again with plaza and moat, even in times of distress. Then, after the sixty-two weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary, and its end will come with a flood. Even to the end there will be a war. Desolations are determined. And he will make a firm covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week he will put a stop to the sacrifice and grain offering, and on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate, even until the complete destruction, one that is decreed, it is poured out on the one that makes desolate. So we have here this astonishing prophecy that Daniel receives about a period of time of 70 weeks that is divided into three different periods of time. So first off, 70 weeks have been decreed for your people. That's a biblical way of saying 70 weeks of years. Why do I say years and not days? Because in the same chapter, Daniel chapter 9, he reads about Jeremiah's prophecy the, of the exile of Babylon that he had prophesied about that would last 70 years. It's in the same chapter. Verse 2. And in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, observed in the books the number of the years which the Lord revealed by the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet for the completion of the desolations of Jerusalem, namely 70 years. So everything's around these years. 70 years of exile. So now he receives a prophecy about 70 weeks. 70 weeks of years. Really, in the Bible, we need to remember that one day is like a thousand years in the way eyes of the Lord, and a thousand years is like one day. And if that's the way it is, so a period of time of 70 times 70, which is 490 years, it says in Daniel, this period of time has been determined for your people. Your people is people of Israel, and your holy city is Jerusalem. And what is supposed to happen in that period of time, at the, by the end of this period of time, is to finish the transgression, make an end of sin, make atonement for iniquity, bring in everlasting righteousness. Anyway, wickedness will be removed from this world. The kingdom of God and the will of God will be done. All those prophecies that we have here in the scriptures will be fulfilled. And it's really speaking about the end of this world. And all of these things then will be fulfilled in all this time of comfort of God until this time is completely fulfilled. It's clear it hasn't happened yet. We're not there yet. But it will happen only after Yeshua returns and raises up his kingdom. And Satan will be bound and imprisoned for these thousand years. But we'll go back and focus on the verses we have in front of us. So in verse 24, 5, 25, here we, Daniel gets some details. And so you are to know and determine that from the issuing of a decree, so from the appointment when this decree will be, go, be given out, to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, until the Messiah, the Prince, there will be 70 weeks and 62 weeks. It will be built again with plaza and moat, even in times of distress. So it's to, Daniel is told that from the point when the decree will go out, and we're going to talk about what that decree is pretty soon. There are set two periods of time on your people. The first period is 49 years, 70 
times se- 70, se- ten, 7 times 7 is 49. And the second one is 62 weeks. You take 62 weeks times 7, you get 434 years. So what's supposed to happen in this period of time? So in the first period, 49 years, Jerusalem is supposed to be rebuilt. We need to remember that Jerusalem was destroyed at this time. The people had been sent into exile. The city was completely destroyed. And now we're talking about, we're getting close to the end of this time period of this exile. There's a process then that begins of returning back to the land. The return to the land. It comes in waves. Zerubbabel, Ezra, Nehemiah, and people were returning back. And what do we know from history? We know that there was the declaration of Cyrus in 538 BC when this return began. It was a slow process that faced opposition from the Samaritans who were in the land at the time. And the raising up of the temple took decades to do. And until the days of the, ec- the declaration of Artaxerxes, we find that in Nehemiah chapter 2, that Nehemiah is always already on the way, and he's coming, rebuilding Jerusalem, building the walls. Nehemiah built the walls, but the city was still pretty empty and destroyed, and there were many houses that were empty, and the population was very small in the city. And then they make all kinds of laws to encourage people to come from the villages around to come and live in Jerusalem, the city. So this process of the restoration of Jerusalem was a very slow and continuing process. But if we look now at this declaration of Artaxerxes, it was 432 before B.C. 452 B.C. So for 49 coming years, Jerusalem was rebuilt and restored. And then we have another period of 62 weeks, another 434 years. And what was supposed to happen at the end of that period? It says something astonishing, that after these 62 weeks, the second period of time, the first one was 49, the second one was 434 years. So after the, the 62 weeks, times 7, the Messiah will be cut off. So if the Messiah is supposed to be cut off and be killed, like you cut a tree down, the Messiah will be cut off. Actually, they crucified him. A tree you cut off. And Yeshua was crucified on a tree. So the Messiah will be cut off. And just like a tree you cut down, and it still has roots, and it can regrow, so Yeshua also was cut off, but he rose up from the dead three days later. So the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. And he left, and he went to heaven, and the city and the holy place, the people the prince to come will destroy. And his head will come with a flood. And Jerusalem and the temple will be destroyed by the people of the prince to come. These are the Romans. Forty-some years later, after Yeshua's time, Titus came, and he conquered the city, and he burnt the temple, and the people went out to exile. And after that was then the Bar Kokhba rebellion. And in the end, all this process, all these rebellions, the land remained empty. And when the people of Israel now go into exile, so this historic clock stopped as far as Israel is concerned. Israel is out of the land. Israel is in exile. So this sand uh, clock stopped, and it's now the time of the Gentiles. And these things that were happening, the gospel of Yeshua went out from people of Israel through the 12 disciples of Yeshua. This, the apostles, the 120, the first congregation, these are Jews who took the gospel to all the Roman Empire. And they said, hey, you, stop worshiping your idols. There's the Messiah, the son of David, the king of Israel. He's the Messiah that our prophets said would come. Stop worshiping these idols. Believe in the God. Believe in the Messiah. Believe the gospel. And so then, 
There's only this last week then, this last week, this last seven years. And those seven years are the times of the Antichrist. What does it say for us? There's small clues here, but they'll get more details later on. And it'll add more information to it. It says then, and he will make a firm covenant for many for one week. So he talks with about covenants. He talks about peace. He starts with, he's deceiving, deceiver, dece, deceiving people. He's, he will make a firm covenant for one week. And in the middle of the week, so after three and a half years, he will put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering. He stops these sacrifices in the temple. So that means there needs to be an altar and a temple in Jerusalem. He stops these worship of God. And on the wing of desolations, and he will put up his idol and will demand that people will worship him as a God. And then, until a complete destruction, when there's discreed, and so then a complete destruction will come on the Antichrist, his kingdom, everything will be destroyed. It reminds us of that stone that was cut out of heaven and came, that was hit the feet and destroys them to dust. And no it doesn't remain anything of that empire. It will be completely destroyed. And God will raise up his kingdom for a thousand years. The kingdom of Yeshua, the kingdom of the son of David. Time when Jerusalem will be the capital city of the whole world. All the nations will come to Jerusalem in these days. And we'll talk more about it as we go on. I wish everyone, dear brothers and sisters, a good and blessed day. And let's remember these signs about the Antichrist. He hasn't come yet, but when he comes, it'll be seven years to be a temple, there has to be sacrifices. These things don't yet exist. But it will come. May the Lord bless you. Shalom.